Greetings, folks. I'd like to welcome you to another Washington County Public Affairs Forum. Today we have Eva Calcano and Doug Hoy. Uh, Eva Calcano is representing the Washington County Cooperative Library Services, and Doug Hoy is the president of the Aloha Community Library, which, by the way, is right over here in the same uh, uh, shopping complex. And uh, it is open to the public. You should drop by, especially after this forum, because um, uh, it's just ridiculously close, and I see a lot of uh, what I call the uh, Washington County Library royalty in the room. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do is just uh, make a few brief appeals. Uh, first, uh, this is a 501c3 volunteer organization. And if you'd like to volunteer, you can uh, rub shoulders, elbows, and, uh, and noses with uh, uh, the politicos of Washington County that only appear here. Uh, I'd like to next uh, uh, direct your attention to our website. We've made a few changes, one of which I announced last week. We've added uh, forum history. So we're talking about a narrative of uh, where the forum's been. And also, uh, some of the folks in the room have also been past presidents. And for being your current president and seeing uh, the immediate past president just join us, hello, Mr. Tyner, um, that being the president is very rewarding. It's also a lot of work. And there's a lot of people who have just contributed immensely to the forum in the past. And you can see who those people are on our website now. Uh, uh, this is a great place where you can see our future programs. And I'd like to uh, let you know that next week we have uh, a board uh, presenting. Cindy Dower uh, and her board, the Westside uh, Cultural Alliance, will be here on 20, the 27th of January. We've got District Attorney Bob Herman uh, arriving. And then February 3rd, we've got Kevin Howard from Twalton Valley Cable Access presenting. And then on the 10th or the 17th, we'll have uh, Hillsboro Empowers Youth here. Uh, one last appeal, and that is uh, this organization continues because of uh, uh, very modest membership fees. And they're just $45 a year for individuals. And I would suggest that uh, if you're watching on television, please join. Uh, you don't have to appear or be here in order to uh, be a member of the forum. But it is arguably, over its 58-year history, is creating a lot of history. We've had some epic debates and some really noteworthy uh, uh, issues presented at the forum, and that those membership fees allow us to continue. Uh, I'd like to close my remarks and ask you to put your hands together for uh, Doug Hoy from the Aloha Community Library Association. Thank you, Eric. It's not a long court, is it? it gets you back. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure being here today. Uh, it's, a, it's actually, uh, uh, it's been a while since I've spoken in front of this organization. Um, it was, the last time was in November of 2012, just two months after we opened the library. And uh, it was a pretty exciting time. And a lot's happened. And so it's great to be able to come back and, and give you an update. And uh, so, so today I'm, I've kind of titled this Looking Back and, and Looking Ahead. So this is our kind of iconic photo that uh, was taken on the day we opened um, and back in September. And it's a cute little boy who was just enthralled with, um, you know, one of those great picture books you, you get when you go to the Aloha Library. And uh, it's, it truly is a good, iconic picture of how, of the impact we've made in this community. Um, it's, it's hard to talk about, so that's why pictures are great. So I, I always like to just kind of pause on that one. Um, our, our mission uh, of the community library is to create and grow a library for the community of Aloha. And, and and I thought it would be appropriate to just put it up on the display and remind everybody about that. Um, it is not easy to do. This has been the most interesting process I've ever been involved with. And uh, uh, community libraries are occasionally happen, uh, not very often. They often come, uh, libraries, new, new libraries come as a result of uh, uh, cities being formed and then people feeling strong about having a, a, a library within a city. But in an unincorporated area like Aloha, um, it just doesn't happen very often. Uh, so we've been really happy to be part of that process. A little background. Uh, we started uh, about 
by having coffee just a few, few feet from here about three years ago in the pepper mill. And uh, it was actually Eric that uh, challenged some people at a CPO6 meeting um, around that time. Hey, who's going to start the committee for the library? And I wasn't in that first group, but, but within a month or two, I started hearing about it and, and kind of checked it out. Wasn't sure what these guys were about. But uh, somehow it just snowballed and, uh, and got my attention. Later in that summer, we were working hard enough that we were able to file articles of incorporation. And then later that fall, applied for our IRS um, uh, you know, recognition, which we were granted just two years ago in January of 2012. So that was a big milestone for us, because that let us uh, go get the money. So in that period of time, in that first year, which was just about six months into our, into our fiscal point, we decided to go get the money, and we got 30000 in about six months, which was pretty good for a bunch of newbies who didn't know what the heck they were doing, really. Uh, the following year, we raised 60000 and this fiscal year, our goal is to raise about 90000 So uh, reviewing again, we, we have... Really, this has been completely volunteer, except for a volunteer coordinator, which we got advice from a few key individuals um, uh, that we were being mentored by to go get a volunteer coordinator before you hire staff. And so we did that. And uh, Terry Palmer's been that in that role uh, since August of 2012, just before we opened. And in part of that process of opening, we, uh, we solicited help from over 150 people, and they worked uh, between when we started and up to the point of opening, we clocked over 5,000 hours. Huge effort. And since then, uh, we've probably put in um, about 10,000 hours, but m fewer people. Very dedicated. About 60 of them work every, every month. Um, one of the things we're proud of in our impact is the story time thing we do every week. This is a preschool, typically a preschool age event where ki uh, kids and their parents or, or a preschool teacher uh, will come in on a Wednesday morning and, uh, and have about 30 minutes of reading a story to them. And for many of them, it's the first time they've been in a library, or first time they've been, they've been exposed to a book. So um, the 900 number isn't 900 unique individuals, but it's our tally of participants. Uh, so it's still pretty pretty big. I, I, I couldn't tell you how many unique individuals that is, but it's probably in the hundreds. Um, and of course, librarians like to talk about hours of opening, <laughs> number of days are open, all those statistics, so I have to put that up there. But it's, it is cool that we've been open for that many hours, 1,700 hours and 240 days, and almost 2,000 library cards. So our circulation is running about 2,000 a month right now. And our total collection size has grown from about oh, 6,500 when we opened to about 11,000 now. And, it's, and that 11,000 isn't just because we added 5,000, but we deleted and gotten rid of some other ones and added more. So we've really added quite a few new materials to that. Uh, we went from four public access computers and we opened to uh, six. And later today I'm going to talk about what we might do beyond that. So here's some interesting ways of looking at the stats. Um, uh, by month, we started at uh, 15 back in January, hours um, a week. And then we jumped in January up to 29. And then held that for a while. And then in October, we went up to 37. And again, uh, just a reminder, what does that mean? Well, we have basically two to three volunteers every hour we're open. So that's a lot of volunteer hours. We have to get to 40 to be at a level three, and uh, so we have a little bit more to go, but not much. We're excited about that. Now here's an overlay of the stats. So on, on the right-hand side of your display is a different scale that shows um, uh, the circulation uh, as it's ramped up uh, since January. And uh, we started in January at about 1,000 times a month and did pretty well ramping up each month till about June, and we're kind of petering out, flattening out a little bit. So we got some work to do to figure that out. And uh, I have some, uh, a breakout of, of what that circ looks like from a, um, a genre standpoint. So you'll see what, what concerns we might have and how we might address this. 
Uh, here's our volunteer hours accumulated. So we're really excited. You can see very steady, regular volunteerism happening in this organization every month growing. So we've accumulated over 7,000 hours in this last calendar year. Um, it's, it's impressive for, for, a new, for a new organization. Here's our circulation breakout. So you can see <clears throat> uh, the, big, the big pie part, 57%, if you can't read that in the back, is um, that's DVDs. So you know, Blockbuster across the street here closed about the time we opened. So we became the, the local blockbuster, which is pretty cool for people. Um, then, of course, we have children's reader and early reader as the next big group. So mostly children's books and DVDs is the way to describe it, is, is, the, is the majority of our circulation. There we go. Thank you, Eric. Um, and uh, some of the proud milestones I'd like to highlight is you know, we opened a business within a business this year. In addition to opening a library, we decided that wasn't enough. We want to do something else, too. So we, we took all these books we've been getting all the time from you, from everybody in our community, and found a way to put them online. And so we opened the Amazon bookstore, and we have a volunteer running that. And we, and we have found a place that has been donated, so we don't have to pay for any rent. We got donated computers, donated bookshelves, donated books. I mean, it's, it's printing money, basically, uh, because what we do is we sell the books and we get cash back. Now, we have to pay a little bit to Amazon so we don't get a perfect uh, profit margin, but, but we're doing pretty well for, for a, a new group on this. After nine months, uh, we pulled in almost $2,000 gross in December, which was pretty cool. Um, we added a student representative on our board of directors that is a student at Aloha High School uh, in the spring. And so that's a one-year term. That'll be coming up uh, again in the spring, and we'll be looking at that and see if she wants to rotate off and get a new person. We started a bi-monthly, bi every other month newsletter just a few months ago. So we're excited about that. We have some volunteers working on that, and they're doing a great job. And over the last year, we've received over 25,000 in grants. Um, so that's in addition to private donations that have helped us raise the money. And here's the list of the grants we've got. So. Um, a lot of little grants and a couple of big ones. Uh, Ezra Jack Keats is an organization that obviously is focused to uh, promote that, that individual's uh, author, um, he, that, that literacy. Um, and so we have a program to uh, roll that out in our, um, uh, to really be involved in, in our reading programs. Uh, German American School, um, similar story where we have uh, an opportunity to purchase specific books um, uh, related to uh, non-English speaking individuals. Gar the Garden Club is giving us a grant to, uh, has given us a grant to purchase uh, garden related items. And the Washington County Board of Commissioners, as many of you know, has been extremely generous in helping us uh, seed um, some money to help uh, really be used in architectural planning for our next major uh, facilities. Rotary Club has given us some money to, um, to do a projector, <clears throat> to buy a projector and a screen. We'll be using that for some multimedia and, uh, and educational programs. Uh, the Cultural Coalition, just recently we got that one, and that'll be for, again, uh, some Spanish language material. <clears throat> uh, the Oregon Community Foundation, I think, is an uh, unrestricted grant, and the Washington County Cooperative Service Grant, which we got, this is the second year we've gotten one of those, um, is again for mostly materials, but also uh, general general purpose use, and we have to match that with other funds. But to some total, there are over twenty five thousand. So that's really pretty pretty good response for the first year, um, first official year of operation. So looking ahead, big announcement today. Effective today, we have promoted Terry, our volunteer coordinator, to the interim library director, and that's a really big milestone for us. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, she's actually, I would have liked to have her over here, but she's working right now. <laughs> so, um, but I, I encourage you to go, uh, if you have a chance to stop by the library, just uh, congratulate her on that. Um, also today, we're announcing that we're going to be moving soon, which is pretty quick. We've only been open, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big deal. Um, we are going to be moving to a place that's actually even closer to this spot. 
In fact, if you drill a hole right through the wall, you go right through it. It's the former National Guard suite. That's right next to the Taekwondo. So uh, it's a little bit bigger, and, and that's what we need. We need a little bit more space right now. We're pretty packed in there. So we're going to think carefully about that space utilization. We're hopefully going to use maybe a little bit more, um, uh, develop some ideas around being flexible in that space, because we've heard so much about people wanting to do programs and have classrooms and flexible seating that we really need to be thinking outside the box on how we set that library up. But of course, we want to add more space for more capacity for more stuff so we can get our circulation up as well. And the third thing that's important for us to be making everybody aware is this is the, this is the year that we apply. In just a few months, we're going to send our application in over to Eva and the other members of the executive team uh, of Washington County Cooperative Library Service to become part of that library cooperative. And the really, uh, well, you've got brochures in your table now that describes some of the advantages of that that we don't have right now. When we become part of the cooperative, we get to be an outlet, just like every other library will be in the county, is in the county, and yet will be here in Aloha, which currently the county doesn't have. So we're excited about doing that and excited about that process. And of course, it's a long process. It's not just because we apply, we get it. Um, there's, there's, there's many components to that process for it to be successful. Uh oh. And now my button's not working. Let's try this. There we go. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay, so there's that National Guard front. And so we're going to just take that sign away and replace it with a library sign pretty soon. I only spent a few minutes on the library, so it's not as pretty as I would like. But anyway, it, it's going to look something like that. Um, so about the, the WCCLS, uh, I think uh, Eva might touch on this a little bit, uh, expand on this a little bit. But deadline's May 1st. Um, primarily, I mean, it's, we've got a five-page document to work through. But the main things for us right now are the funding, getting the money, because that translates to who we can pay and how, we can pay, how much we can pay them. And we need to have one FTE. Uh, for this to be a level three library, which is what they require for admission. Now, Terry will be paid at a 0.75 rate. So we're excited about, you know, we're three quarters there. We just need to get that last quarter in. We have the budget to do that this year. So we're, we're you know, going to really work hard on, on getting to our level three from the staffing point of view done uh, this fiscal year. Circulation, we got a ways to go because we want to be at 3,300. We're only at 2,000. And so we, we suspect there's a number of reasons for that. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a problem that needs to be focused on. We know Terry's up to the challenge of, of working on that. And the hours of operation, of course, will come as well. And we'll probably wait until we move to our new space uh, to expand our hours. And we'll, we'll time that appropriately because uh, we've got lots of changes happening in the volunteer um, crew that's been helping us. So one idea I wanted to leave with you before I, I let uh, Eva take over here is um, I saw this uh, article recently that uh, Los Angeles Public Library is, in a sense, taking over some of the responsibilities of the Los Angeles School District. Um, they're offering a program for offering high school diplomas. And it's pretty you know, out there. I don't see us doing that. But I see a lot of collaboration going on and, and lots of conversations that I've been part of in the last week um, having to do with after school support of the local elementary schools and middle schools. They're desperate for help. With all the staff, ca uh, the staff cutbacks in the last year, um, they're looking outside the box in, the, in their typical way of approaching, um, especially serving uh, kids that are underserved. Um, there's a, quite a few schools in this area. I can't even one of them is, which is a Title IX school, and they really um, have some amazing programs, but have some huge needs. And so we need to grow our facilities. And this next phase that we're going to isn't enough. So we will be talking to some of you in the future, I'm sure, about helping us go to phase three as soon as we rapidly can. So that leads me to my final slide, which is, you know, we need your help. And um, if, if your fundraising abilities are, 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 you know, not completely exhausted in January, we. Uh, I want to make sure you're aware that we are a fully qualified 501c3. And you can find out how to do that at our website. You can also volunteer our time and, and expertise. So come by, and we'll, we'll put you to work. 
and of course, help spread the word. Talk to your friends and neighbors. We need people to know about the library. It's amazing how many people even today who come in and go, I don't know there's a library here. So we just need to get the word out and help us circulate. So with that, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Eva Calcano, and I'm the director of the Washington County Cooperative Library Services. And I joked with Doug earlier, I can stand in front of this display and not block your view. He can't, so um, I can use the microphone stand. Um, before I be begin, I want to introduce a few folks in our um, gathering today who are part of, uh, as Eric called, the library royalty and people I really uh, admire and work with every day, including Veronica Eden, who is the director of the West Slope Community Library in the Raleigh Park neighborhood, Debbie Brody, who's the director of the North Plains Public Library in North Plains, uh, Hillary Ostland, who is at Hillsborough Public Library and will be the director, the branch manager of the Shoot Park branch when that reopens in March. Um, it's currently being remodeled. And Lisa Tattersall, who's a Cooperative Library Services, Adult Services Librarian, and I'm, I'm happy that they're here um, to support me and to they can help me answer your questions later on. <laughs> the Cooperative Library Services is a partnership. Um, and, and that partnership currently includes Washington County, and I represent the county portion of that, um, and nine cities in the county, and two nonprofit associations. And together, we provide the public library service for all county residents. Um, It is a true partnership. We, we divide and conquer. The county does certain things, the member libraries do certain things, and together it adds up to a full picture. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about uh, the different roles and then how ALOA might fit into that, um, and then uh, talk about some ways that library service is changing and how we are continuing to reinvent what we do to meet your needs. Um, the, our libraries work together in a spirit of cooperation uh, to provide excellent library service to all county residents. So what does the county do? The county has three roles, um, and the first is to be the, the primary funder of public library operations. Our funding comes from two sources. About two-thirds of WCCLS funding comes from the county's general fund. It's transferred to the library service every year. About one-third of our funding comes from a local option levy, uh, which was recently passed in 2010 and it goes through June of 2016. And I'll talk a little bit more on the levy um, as it, the expiration of that levy uh, later on the, in the talk. Um, this year we will distribute just under $20 million to those nine cities and two nonprofits to support their local library operations. And um, that's the about 63%, 65%, think of it as two-thirds of the money it takes to run public libraries in this county come from the county's dollars. Um, we also provide support services to our member libraries, including a shared library catalog and website. We um, provide the hardware and maintain the hardware software and network that links all of the libraries together. Uh, we provide internet access for library staff and um, public uh, internet and free Wi-Fi. We provide daily courier deliveries to pick up and deliver materials between libraries, and they handle about eight million things a year, uh, running seven days a week between our libraries. We support early literacy and reading readiness uh, in our countywide summer reading programs. We provide the subscriptions to ebooks, downloadable products, and all of our electronic databases that are available through our website. And the third thing we do is provide um, outreach services to special populations. The primary example of that is that we provide free delivery of materials to people who are homebound. So we mail uh, materials for free to people who are either homebound in their home or in a residential care facility and can't come to the library to use it normally. 
Um, we also provide outreach to non-English speaking residents and we support the jail library. That was what the county do does. So what do the public libraries do in the partnership? Well, they provide and maintain library facilities. Um, they're responsible for their buildings, whether they own them, build them, lease them, um, share them with other entities, that's a local responsibility. They can supplement the county operational funding um, with local funding, and that's all decided based on whether the, the city's um, resources and, and the determination of the needs at the local library. They also um, determine all their local policies, the hours that they're open, as Doug mentioned, open hours, their staffing levels, their programs that they offer, the collections that they provide. And they agree to comply with any um, standard policies among the group. So we agree to play well with others and agree to try to treat all county residents um, with the same level of service. So how would ALOA fit into this picture? Um, as, as Doug mentioned, WCCLS has uh, guidelines for admission of new libraries, and we consider ALOA a developing library, and they are um, working through the hoops to jump, uh, jumping through the hoops to get to that end process, product. Um, the most recent library to join the cooperative was the North Plains Public Library, and that was led by a city, so it was a little bit different organization as opposed to a nonprofit. Um, we have assigned the Cedar Mill Community Library to serve as a mentor for ALOA to help them work through the guidelines and um, advise them on the process. And I, th I think it's safe to say that all of our member libraries are talking about the day when ALOA becomes a member, not if ALOA becomes a member, that we're really, um, <laughs> Eric's cheering. <laughs> And we're looking forward to that, and we really see that this location serves a really important geographic um, part of the county that was lesser served. Um, anybody who lives in Aloha can use any of the other libraries, but you have to be able to get there. And that's very difficult when you see that um, one of the chief um, circulating areas is children's materials. Children can't ride their bikes to Hillsborough or Beaverton or ride the bus by themselves. They've got to be taken to the library. So that um, neighborhood access is a really important piece. The key factor um, for all of this is that a new library can join the cooperative when new funding is available to support uh, the addition. To, um, and in this case, the anticipated levy um, would begin in July of 2016. So our current levy goes through June of 2016. We're anticipating going to the voters in November of 2015 to ask for another levy. Um, clearly, if we add another player, that makes it a different question than just renewing the, continuing the, the current funding. Um, so there are some conversations beginning now among cooperative members about what we need um, to maintain a current level of service at all of our member libraries and to support the changing service needs of our residents and to address growth, diversity, and the addition of a new member. Um, in addition to uh, ALOA, there are some of our member libraries that are looking at facility expansions to also address local needs, and that includes Beaverton, Cedar Mill, Cornelius, and Hillsboro. So a lot is still happening around the county. What are public libraries up to today? Well, libraries are changing, and like any organization, we need to continue to assess services um, and continue to change to meet our customers' changing needs. And public libraries across the U.S. are reinventing themselves on a continual basis, and, and so are we. Um, what do you think of when you think of a public library? Do you think of black and white old photos of uh, quiet repositories of books of shushing librarians? What do you think of? A uh, long line of people waiting at a checkout desk. Um, a lot of times we'll hear, you know what libraries were like when I was a kid, as, as a comment we hear. Um, lots of children's books and programs. What other things do, do you think of? No one's gonna raise their hand, okay. Fees. <laughs> Overdue fines. <laughs> Well, if you haven't visited your public library recently, I would encourage you to do so because many of those um, traditional services are still there, but they are transforming to address current um, 21st century needs. And here are some of the things that you'll find. Um, you'll find a lot of electronic offerings alongside print offerings. Uh, we offer free 
e-books and e-audio books that you can download to your own devices. So if you've got a Kindle or an iPad or a tablet, you can download th those things. Um, you can also check out an e-reader with preloaded books on it if you want to do that too. And library staff are willing to help you learn to use that e-reader that you got for Christmas if you're kind of baffled by how it works. Uh, we offer a lot of resources through our wccls.org uh, website um, to help you research just about any topic from homework help to investments to genealogy to hobbies. As I said previously, we provide free internet access so you can either use a library computer um, connected to the internet or you can bring your own laptop or tablet in and use our free Wi-Fi. Um, with e-government, um, increasingly the only way to access government services, libraries office offer assistance with that too. Think about tax forms, Medicare and healthcare signups, unemployment and job searching, uh, unemployment benefits, GED tests, etc. are all available only online these days. So if you don't have a computer, come to the library because we do. Libraries are also gathering places, gathering spaces. And Doug mentioned earlier that they're thinking about uh, when they have an expanded space, how to make that flexible and to have more room for programs. He didn't say, so we can fill it with more book bookshelves. It's to allow place for people and programs and uh, discussion groups and homework assistance and other kinds of things. And we really see that happening. Um, the, WCCLS member libraries like to think of themselves at the as the front porches of their communities. So a place where you can gather, meet your neighbors, um, discuss, relax. We provide um, space for public meetings. Uh, we provide study and workspace for students and on entrepreneurs. We provide opportunities for residents to meet their neighbors over common interests like book discussion groups, craft nights, movie screenings. We offer free programs on many topics from beekeeping to foreign films to author lectures to poetry presentations to art presentations and more. Um, we also, or many of our libraries also include public art and some of them have rotating art displays. So they're a, an attractive place to go as well. Libraries are also learning centers. Um, libraries support learning for all ages, um, both formal and informal. And we provide expertise and materials to parents with early literacy need, about the early literacy needs of children. We provide homework support for students. We provide interactive language learning tools like Mongo languages to help you learn and speak uh, another language. Um, libraries also offer uh, intercambios, which are opportunities for community members to practice their Spanish speaking conversation skills with other community members. Um, and we offer materials in many languages. On the slide there, you'll see just three different Harry Potter versions in different languages, and I think there are six at least in the system. But because Washington County's population is increasingly diverse, we are beginning to collect materials in, a, in increasingly diverse languages uh, to meet their needs as well. We offer scheduled or drop-in classes to teach you how to use common software applications or to use social media. Um, we offer online college and career exploration tools, uh, which are available uh, preparatory materials such as the sample SAT, ACT, and GED tests to help you prepare for college or a job. And a budding area is to support um, our residents with creativity project, products such as lending video and sound recording equipment so you can create your own um, films at home, your own uh, sound recordings. You can do oral inter interviews of your neighbors, those kinds of things. And libraries are also about convenience services. Uh, we are all too busy these days, and libraries really value your time. Um, and yes, with access to the internet, almost anybody could do their own research, but do you really have the time to do it thoroughly? I don't know. Would you like some expert advice to save time and get you started? Think of your li local librarian as your information concierge. Let your concierge provide suggestions and tips to save you time and improve your research outcome. 
And while we are delighted to see you visit the library, I want to remind you that you can also access many of our services and content 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without leaving home. The WCCLS website, um, through that you can search the collection, request materials to be delivered to your local branch for convenient pickup, and someday that will be Aloha Community Library. Uh, you can manage your holds and renew your materials. You can, we'll send you email notifications of your loan status. We'll remind you before your books are due so you can avoid those overdue fines. That's uh, all, the, all that happens electronically. Um, and most libraries have self-service checkout stations to speed up your pickup of materials. And Beaverton and Hillsborough libraries now have automated systems, uh, return systems that allow you to check in your materials 24 hours a day. Did I go up? I went the wrong way. There we go. Um, in June of last year, WCCLS conducted an email survey of residents through a website called Westside Voices. And I wanted to share with you some of the results of that. We had over 2,000 responses. Um, overall, 88% of those respondents said that their local library met or exceeded their expectations. I just wanted to end right there, but I had to read the rest of it. Three quarters of the res respondents um, said that they visited a public library every couple of weeks or more often, more frequently, and 62% visited the WCCLS.org website every couple of weeks or more often. So you can see countywide that's a very high level of use uh, of our public libraries. They're well loved and well used. Um, when asked uh, what libraries could do to improve services, the results could be summarized as more, faster, easier. More materials, more open hours, more parking, more programs, less wait time for popular materials, easier to find ebooks, um, those kinds of things. And I'll re just read to you some of the, my favorite comments. I love the library. I used to spend plenty on books, and now I rarely buy books. I am more than willing to support the library with my tax dollars. I think in general, WCCLS has done a terrific job. I've talked with others in different states, and it's clear that our system is one of the best. Thank you. I've been using these libraries since I was little, and I'm a lifelong reader. I am pleased to offer my children even better experiences than the libraries of my youth. So the libraries in Washington County um, continue to reinvent their services to meet the changing needs of the Washington County residents. And I thank you for listening today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, and I'd invite Doug back up in case you have questions specific for Aloha. I'm uh, Bill Kroger, a forum member. Thanks both of you for coming in. It was a good presentation. Thank you. I uh, had a question. I was, it's, uh, I'm just sort of curious when you, uh, about the process of getting books. You know, and you talked a little bit about getting grants and purchasing books, and it seems to me it would take a long time to do that. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you go about filling up the shelves of the library. Mm. In relationship to that, uh, I was wondering if you had any restrictions on the kind of books you might get or the contents of certain books, because sometimes they can get controversial, and maybe talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, Aloha is a little different because they're um, functioning primarily on grant funding. So I'll talk about the, the members of the Cooperative Library Services, and then I'll let you talk about that. Um, through their operational <coughs> budget, um, libraries allocate a percentage to materials. And so we typically buy um, new materials, we buy them from what we call book jobbers at a significant discount um, from what you would pay retail at a bookstore. Um, so we have, a, most libraries have an acquisitions department uh, and processing and get those materials um, into the library and processed. All of the libraries would have collection development policies that spell out the types of materials um, that they would buy and ha the percentages, how much are for children's materials, how much is adult fiction, how much is adult nonfiction, how much is for media, those kinds of things. Um, and they almost always have a process for um, questions. So if somebody says, I don't know if this is appropriate for the library, there's a process to talk with the librarian about that material and a review process if there's a question about that. 
Yeah, about this. Um, sorry. Uh, one correction is our uh, our funding has been mostly through private donations rather than grants. Um, but it feels like I mean I, I highlighted the grants. I, I've under underemphasize the, the, the importance of pri personal donations, but that's really, in fact, how we've gotten where we are today. Um, as we grow to be a more mature organization uh, with some legacy, getting larger grants will be easier, but many of the grantors, uh, you know, look askance at an organization that's only been around for a year. Um, with regard to collections, we do have a collections policy. It's it, you know, we've borrowed a lot of um, uh, mat uh, material as much as we can from our mentor libraries, as she mentioned before. Cedar Mill's been great. Um, um, uh, North Plains and Debbie has been wonderful helping us with documentation to help bootstrap all that kind of stuff about getting collections policy and, and getting procedures and policies in place. So we're, we're doing pretty well. We're not quite perfect yet, but we're working on that. And so back to the question, how, what do we do about material? Well, We've got some of the same contracts that Washington County has with Borders and, and some other, I, I don't think we have quite the volume that Washington County has, so we can't quite get the discounts, but we are doing that and uh, we're acquiring and, and you know, because we're so new, we get people that come in and say, uh, here's some books. And, and they're literally brand new off the shelf bestsellers. So that's what's been happening in us and maybe that happens a little bit more often for us than it does for Beaverton or Hillsboro. I forgot to say that meant our, our public libraries also receive a lot of donated materials. Sometimes it's added to the collection, but quite often it's used in a book sale kind of uh, opportunity mm -hmm. that helps generate funding that's then funneled back into the book uh, budget to buy new materials. Hi, Phil Nelson, excuse me, board member. I had a question about the Aloha Library service area in terms of population and perhaps uh, an idea of the boundaries because <laughs> it's in an unincorporated part of Washington County, right? Well, maybe and you want to answer that too. Kind of like to know what's going on. Okay. My flippant answer to that is that any library in Washington County has a service population of 540,000 on any given day because any county resident can use any of our member libraries at any time and many use multiple libraries all the time. Um, but we do have a process uh, within WCCLS of divvying up the county um, so that we assign a portion, a geographic area to each member library um, and not count anybody more than once. So it's a, it's kind of a complicated process. But right now, Aloha is divided between Beaverton and Hillsboro. When Aloha can, uh, and, and Cedar Mill probably, yes, that's right. So um, when Aloha becomes a member library, we'll have to redraw those boundaries and give them um, uh, a portion of the county too. Yeah, that, that's really what I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, I might say one more thing, and that is, you know, with all of the Reedville, Lower Reedville studies that's going on, um, we've had some tremendous help in demographic analysis. <laughs> Thank you to Washington County. So we think that a Lower Reedville space is roughly 50,000 people. So yeah, there's some fine lines about what is in, who is not, who's in Aloha, who's in Hillsborough, who's in Beaverton, who's in Aloha. But I think um, that that information will be helpful in that process that Eva has mentioned, which is going to be in the future, which is dividing up uh, the service districts, and they won't do that until they need to. Chris Leslie, former uh, member and ringer for Eric. Uh, question: What needs are librarian libraries meeting that one would not typically think of? I'll repeat Hillary's answer to that. Hillsboro Public Library has a bird watching kit that you can check out because the um, Brookwood Library is in the Dawson Creek um, development process and there are, are uh, 
water features and pathways, and there are lots of birds and geese and ducks there all the time. So you can check out the kit, walk around um, the area. You can also go take it over to Jackson Bottoms. I think it was donated by Jackson Bottoms Wetland. Or we, no. We got some material. They got material from that. Um, another example is that like one of the more. unique members of the Cooperative Library Services is Tuolity Health Information Center. Um, so there is a consumer health library that's open uh, one to five, Monday through Friday, to provide information to normal people, not to doctors, um, about health-related topics that you can read and understand. Um, and they're, all of their materials are available through the WCCLS website, or you're welcome to go into the library or call the library, and they will do customized packets of information. If you've been diagnosed with something new, they can tell you what you need to know about that. So that's a really nice dimension. Another um, unique uh, special library in the cooperative is Oregon College of Art and Craft, which is a, a degree-granting small college um, just past St. Vincent's Hospital that has a fabulous art and design collection, and that's all available to Washington County residents to check out. And I'll add another Washington County one that I'm aware of, which is in Cedar Mill. They have a a special collection for, if you're a, a hobbyist in video production, you can actually check out some software and hardware and all sorts of fun stuff to enable your hobby. And so, and I have read literature, not necessarily about Washington County libraries, but throughout the country, libraries are transforming and they're becoming uh, just really a hodgepodge of, of different things that the community, the local community wants. So for example, a 3D printer, uh, Lake Oswego has a 3D printer, there you go. <clears throat> so I, I really don't think there's any limitation to what libraries can do aspirationally. It's really about what the librarians want to do, what, they're, what the public is willing to fund. What you prioritize. Yeah, what, what do you want? John Leeper, forum member. Great presentation, both of you, thank you. <clears throat> I think Eva, there are a couple of people that uh, you have not in any way recognized, <coughs> and, 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 and that, is, uh, that is particularly the uh, Bales family as well as Roy Kim for the support of the library in Cedar Mill as well as on up in Bethany. And, uh, I would, uh, and, and here, and I would just suggest that uh, <coughs> there be some public recognition of them in your presentation as well. That's a very good point, Mr. Leeper. Um, public libraries have already always benefited from the largesse of philanthropists, and I think of Andrew Carnegie uh, 100 years ago building public libraries. Um, but in our community, there are some people who have um, really been fundamental in spurring um, public library access, and the uh, Bales family, which helped provide space for uh, the beginning of the Cedar Mill Community Library, and Roy Kim in the Bethany Development, Central Bethany Development, who provided uh, free and very discounted space for the beginning of the Bethany Library. Mm -hmm. And um, Bales and Finley's family have supported the space for the Aloha Library as well, so that's really wonderful. <coughs> Harry Bodine, for a member. Uh, Eva, if uh, w once the law applies, the officially applies, mm -hmm. can they get on that map you just distributed with a with a like a, an a asterisk wannabe? Or a yes, wannabe. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great idea. I, I, would, I was <laughs> my my thought that would be a good one. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was intrigued, Doug, when you had the uh, your display up there. That the main the largest single item going out of this library here is DVDs, and is that is that a trend countywide? I'm sure it's, I mean, you're, I'm I don't believe that. so. I still believe that print um, is over 50%, uh, but media is a, a good chunk of countywide circulation. The last time I looked, it was in the one-third percentage. Yeah, okay. um, but I think also, but I haven't mm -hmm. looked recently. Also, because th Blockbuster has virtually disappeared, and Hollywood video has disappeared. For people who don't have streaming Netflix at home, the library is really their only outlet for, for video materials, so. Thank you.
Well, good afternoon, uh, Lee Coleman, forum member. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, do the libraries generally have partnerships with the schools, talking about middle schools and, and high schools, as well as um, an older population, uh, to enhance literacy and vocabulary? I divide literacy into, uh, case in point, I have a friend who's 55, had no idea what the word preamble meant. And I, you know, that's a striking problem. <laughs> so what, what kind of interface do the public libraries have with the, particularly with the schools? Um, I think it, that's a very localized relationship. Um, and so the local Beaverton Library or Hillsborough Library or Cornelius would have um, a relationships with their local elementary, middle, and high schools um, prov for providing programs. Sometimes the librarians go to the schools to do presentations. I think the biggest piece there is that we provide summer reading programs that bridge that gap between school years, and we do we work very hard to try to do a nice handoff uh, at the end of the school year to get kids information about summer reading programs um, that keep kids reading and intellectually active during those months when they're not in school. And there have been a variety of um, research studies that, that show that reading over the summer helps kids go back to school um, where they left off in June, and kids who don't lose several months of um, reading skills uh, and have to try to catch up. So um, that's a really important part of what we do is to try to support that, also with um, homework assistance and ho tools that kids can use uh, for homework support. Chris Leslie, board member, <laughs> thank you both for being <laughs> here. This is really great. Thanks, Chris. I believe that uh, encyclopedias and dictionaries are very important to anybody's education, especially hard copies. I'm not a computer <laughs> person. And with encyclopedias, you can get a wonderful worldview of science and history. Uh, how are your supplies on these uh, books? I think we still have print copies in all of the libraries, and I think some libraries also keep the outdated version that actually checks out. I'm like you. I love that you know that world book that we grew up with as kids. I just <laughs> Britannica, yeah. Um, we do also have uh, Encyclopedia Britannica online through our website, but uh, it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's really important, those kinds of... Uh, we also have a variety of specialized encyclopedias about animals, about nature, about science in particular that are available electronically that um, I, we provide for uh, particularly students doing school reports and that kind of thing. Thank you. One of our one of our very frequent donor questions is, um, can you take my encyclopedias? <laughs> and we can only usually take one, so we've taken one, and that's about all the room we have. So um, they don't change, other than the yearbook thing, they don't really change year to year. But you know that this is an evolving area um, in terms of how information is distributed. So in your and my generation, in, that information was distributed in a hardbound, very carefully edited, you know, hundreds of people involved in producing a volume kind of activity. It's transforming into a Wikipedia solution for the generation or two behind us. And, and that's not gonna change. So we have to evolve and adapt, the libraries have to evolve and adapt as well. And because really it's about serving everybody. I, yeah, actually, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Squires, forum member. A uh, question for each of you. Eva, yesterday I had the privilege of being in San Francisco, and outside of their public library, I was bewildered and shocked by the fact that the cleaning person, in addition to general cleaning supplies, had a gallon milk jug that they filled with syringes. After a discussion from illicit drug use, because it's downtown San Francisco with that problem, uh, after an engagement with a conversation, I found out that the San Francisco Public Library has a full-time social service worker in their library. So 
Uh, my question for you, Eva, and I've got one for you, Doug, is that uh, can you tell me what social needs are the libraries meeting, uh, segueing off of that example that uh, the general public may not be aware of? And then my question for you, Doug, is this, is that the Aloha Community Library Association, which I've had a front row view and it's a build out and it's growth, has done something to my understanding that no other library in Washington County has done, and that is it basically opened with a website with a physical location following. So I'd like you to, uh, if possible, uh, just set an expectation of how this library basically debuted electronically first and then rolled out uh, a, a hard location. Maybe tell us about the electronic services that are offered. We've heard about the computer uh, um, availability, but maybe let me zero in, digital divide, there are people, the haves and haves not. Can you tell me about the unmet needs of Aloha that are being met now with urban services by computer access in their new Aloha library? And I guess I've got the last question. Folks, okay. take it away. I'll go first on that one. And Eric alluded to something that uh, I've, we see at the national level and that libraries are um, partnering with social service agencies. So the instance in San Francisco was a, with a social worker um, and I've heard that social workers or public health nurses or other um, community partners might have regular hours at the public library to meet people where they are. They may not come to the public health department to see the nurse, but they might come get their blood pressure checked at the library, those kinds of things. So at this point, we don't have that happening in Washington County, but I wouldn't rule it out. Um, the social services needs that we are meeting, I think in many cases are about um, helping new uh, residents, new immigrants to the area um, assimilate and to use, learn to use English um, through our materials. That's a time old role of public libraries. That's why the public library started at the beginning of the, the 20th century um, to help the waves of immigrants coming from Europe um, assimilate into their new country to learn English so they can get jobs and, and be <laughs> regular members of, of the American dream, partners in the American dream, still happening today. We have still people coming from all over the globe, um, some with PhDs, some without. <laughs> and they're coming here and they're needing to learn English. Um, their children need to learn English, that kind of thing. So I think that's a key um, factor that we're, we're supporting now. And I'll as you say that, I just think of a great story because one of the days, this goes back probably nine months ago, I was in the library on a day we were closed and I was using it from my office, which I do, and uh, I had a knock on the door and there was a gentleman there and he wanted to know if we were open. Of course, we're not open, but he, 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 just, he was a little more persistent than usual, so I, I invited him in. And it turns out this was a gentleman from Iraq and he was visiting his sister who lives just right across the street over here. And uh, he's a librarian. <laughs> and he wanted to show me his website in Farsi. But of course, I have, I have Google Translate so I could convert it to English <laughs> and actually see some of this stuff. And it was really fascinating to get that international connection. And, and you know, we really do live in a very diverse community. And, it, and it, it, sometimes it doesn't feel that way, but sometimes it's amazing. Um, I don't think Aloha feels very urban, but it's diverse. And, and that's the distinction. And most of that diversity is hidden behind the door of the home. You don't see it every day. The really wonderful thing about libraries is it opens up that door. Everybody comes in. There's no restriction. Doesn't matter what religion, what race, what language you speak, we welcome everybody. And that's unique to American public libraries. That's cool. Now, back to Eric's question. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we were pretty excited about opening that website, and then we had some, we wanted to do some things that were a little different. But, you know, um, and, and actually I had pro I'd browsed around a lot of the websites uh, in the Washington County Cooperative, um, uh, especially the in independent ones, the, the non-city ones, because the city ones, you know, generally have pretty good staff. That's why Beaverton and Hillsboro, they've got staff online that, you know, several of them that are doing website stuff. So that wasn't... Um, the model, we couldn't compete with that, but we could look at what Cedar Mill's done, some of the other smaller libraries that really are just, you know, making do and they don't really have web people on their staff. So we, we did some stuff that was maybe um, a little bit different and we got some other talents and volunteers to come in and help us. We've added some resources um, and uh, we want to do some more. 
and I've got, um, a, you know, it really is, the sky's the limit on that. We just have to find volunteers to help us do it. I had a really great conversation with a 14-year-old on Saturday. I was telling Eric, this is uh, one of these, you know, brilliant standouts. He's already, you know, got a website and, uh, you know, has produced uh, 70 videos and, uh, you know, handed me his business card with a QR code on it, you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. 14, right? So uh, there are talented people out there who, who still want to get started, and a public library volunteer thing is kind of how you do it. And so um, I really, I'm so optimistic that we're going to pull this off, but it's still daunting. And we, and um, Amy Grant wrote something uh, in our blurb uh, for today's announcement, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time, right? And uh, that's really what we're doing. We're, we really are just eating an elephant slowly. But we want to do it as fast as we can because the community needs it big time. So one of the things that Gene over here, Gene Allison is one of our board members, is exploring is um, uh, some organizations out there, nonprofits, et cetera, that produce stuff on, on the web. And you can get access to it for free. And it's teaching aids for elementary school students. But they need some mentoring. So we're looking into offering that and getting collaboration between us and elementary schools with our technical volunteers working with the volunteer, with, with the elementary school teachers who are already maxed out because they have 40 kids in their class, and do after school programs that are exciting to elementary school kids in computer science. So that is one of the things we're starting to explore. We think it's got huge potential, and we hope to attract more people who want to work in that area to help us. All right, folks, it's time to wind down. I want to remind you that uh, next week we've got the West Side Cultural Alliance presenting. Cindy Dower is their staff member. And at the risk of full disclosure, I sit on that board. I sit on the board of the uh, Aloha Community Library. Uh, I sit on this board. Uh, and you'll see a couple more programs which I sit on the board on. So, um, and so when our uh, program uh, committee person, John McWilliams, said, give me some help, I just went through my Rolodex and booked it. And that's why it all looks like uh, the Eric Show. Um, so. <laughs> Forgive me, but uh, I, I want to close on just one very passionate uh, thing, and that is at the conclusion of last year's or last form season's program, we had uh, Professor Jim Moore from uh, Pacific University basically state one of the big trends as he sees it in the next five to ten years of Washington County is how we provide urban services for unincorporated Washington County. It's going to be a big, big issue, very contentious. And probably one of the gentlest ways that we can deflate that issue is with something very cute, with big puppy dog eyes that makes cute little noises, and that's baby libraries. And the Alo <laughs> didn't see that one coming, did you, folks? Um, and that, as opposed to having political wrangling and you know these just nasty cat and dog fights, what we've got is probably arguably one of the gentlest positive steps that can be possibly taken in the reconciliation of urban services. And that is something that, well, my closing comment would be this, is that if you hate public libraries, you're probably an outlier. And that libraries, again, are just really cute. And if you hate public libraries and say so in public, you're probably in big trouble. And so having the Aloha Library and Eva here, uh, who's a queen of all libraries, Washington County, yes. I said library royalty, didn't I? Um, well, we've got royalty in the house, and uh, um, so with that being said, um, we've got a cute library in the way. Why don't you guys play hooky from work or whatever for the next 15 minutes and go over and check out the Aloha Community Library, because new libraries are cute, cuddling, go give it a hug. See you next week, folks. Bye-bye.